Hi, Kerry here again from Best of Us Investors. Um, yesterday afternoon, Friday afternoon, we had a, uh, a Zoom meeting. The, our tribe always has a Zoom meeting on Friday afternoon, and we discuss what has happened in the past week in the stock market, and we then discuss what we think is going to be happening in the, uh, in the following week. And as you can imagine, the topic of the conversation is, my God, what's happening to the stock market? I'm totally in the red. Everything is as red as it can be, and particularly those bioscience, biotech stocks that you put us in, or I didn't put them in, but I'm in, and I'm down 60% on Editus and CRISPR and Caribou, and these are the genome sequencing stocks. And what's happening? What's happening? Because what I realized is most of my tribe members, most of the investors, the majority of them have never been through this before. They got into the market in 2018, 2019, 2020. The only experience they have in a down market is that of the corona crisis in March of 20, and, and it only lasted uh, two months, and then everything just skyrocketed back up. So everybody has experienced just a positive market. And now this turn, and it's a hard turn down, is scaring the living bejesus out of them. So they're asking me, is the biotech philosophy still strong strategy? Is it strong? And if it is, how long is this dip going to last? And when are we going to see the surge that you think is going to eventually come around the biotech stocks? And that's what I want to talk about this in this video. And I want to take you to the computer and take you to my trading views charts and show you some history that says this, this happens even to good stocks like Amazon, and it will recover if you believe in the science. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, stay to the end of the video because I'm going to share with you then kind of where I think this is going and how long it's going to take. And if you're safe, uh, Donna asks, should I cut my losses and move my stocks, lose, lose my, move my uh, investments to other more secure stocks. And we're going to talk about that at the end. So, first of all, this is not financial advice. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. So, let's start with you are interested at this point in biotech stocks, or you have bought biotech stocks in the past and you're in the red down 50, 60 percent. Uh, what I have to ask you is a few questions. Number one, do you believe in the science? Do you believe that they are going to be able to stick a needle in my arm and take away the possibilities of Alzheimer's and uh, cancer out of my body. Do you believe that's possible? If you do, then we can move forward. Do you believe in artificial intelligence, that we are creating computer chips that can think and remember better than the human mind and then make decisions, better decisions than the human mind? Do you believe in that science? If you take the first belief, that you believe that they will be able to take uh, disease out of my body, and you combine it with, compute, with uh, uh, artificial intelligence, we now have a basis to move forward. Because what you need to realize is that this science dates back probably 30 years, when lab technicians sat with petri dishes and notebooks and did experiments and then wrote down the results of those experiences. Then within 10 years after that, their companies came to them and said, here, we want to introduce you to a computer. No longer put your notes in a notebook, put them, enter them into this computer where you can keep them and you can refer back to them to help you move faster to find this cure. Then we move 10, 10 years closer and we find that now that they are actually 
putting this data that they're collecting on a day-to-day -day basis and putting it into the cloud. And now that information, their information, is compared with thousands of other lab technicians' uh, information. Now we come to today and we uh, introduce NVIDIA's chip that basically uh, helps you, it comes back to you and says, okay, thank you for your data. We compared it to thousands of other people's data. Try this. That's where we are today. And if you believe that, if you believe that these scientists, the science that they can put a needle in my arm, arm my first responder. What are my first responder? The cells are the, the first responders are those cells within my body that cure, that fix the cut that I have in my hand. Well, what they don't have, they have all the tools to fix my cut. What we've given them over the years through vaccines is the, the tools to, to cure my flu, to give that T cell that goes to, into my, into, into every cell in my body and takes that flu and kills it. And that's what we just had with the vaccine from um, uh, for the for the coronavirus. Well, now we know that there are other problems that we have inherited over the years that are called cancer, and they have screwed up our genome. And we need to give those first responders a a tool, a chainsaw that they can go in and cut that uh, that. Uh, uh, bad function called cancer, and then the body has the ability to replace the cut out genome and take cancer out of my body. That's the science. If you believe in that, then you have the means to move forward in biotech. Now, what we now have to do is say, okay, Kerry, I believe it. I know it. I know it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Then why the hell am I in the red in these stocks? Why am I in the red? Well, I believe in the science. You believe in the science. We all know it's going to happen. Why are we in the red? For the same reason that Amazon went from $100 a share to $8 a share in 2020 and 20 in 2000. And we'll look at that and we'll understand it and then we'll move forward. So let's first go look at the history of Amazon and get an understanding how that stock could be issued at a dollar 25 cents, go to $80 and then come slamming down to $8 all in a short period of time. And what drove that? It was fear. It was fear of the market and what, and I'm going to use this phrase a lot, behind fear is opportunity, but you got to get past the fear. All right, let's look at Amazon. I recognize a lot of you have never been through a down market before. You got into this in 2019, 2020, and all you have seen is a skyrocketing market other than the short dip that we had for the in March uh, for the reaction to the corona crisis. But I want to take you and show you Amazon from its origination and see if you can't see some parallels as to what is happening to the, um, the genome sequencing and genome editing stocks. And after we get this in our mind, we get our history lesson, we'll take a look and we'll see if we can't see some similarities. This is, this is the introduction of um, of Amazon when it came out for a dollar twenty five cents, and it introduced us to a new concept of e commerce, and the market reacted to it as they saw it in the news and said, "This is really something." And you can see it went from um, what what did we say a dollar twenty five up to. And looking at the, 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 the peaks, not the in, intraday, it went to $90.21 in, in a matter of about 18 months. So then we saw some dips as we moved into uh, 1999, but then 
uh, they they went right back up, back up to that again that high of roughly ninety dollars a share. And then we had fear enter the market. We had fear that we had overreacted to the power of the digital revolution and the power of uh, the internet. And Amazon, as a result of that fear, went from uh, eighty-eight dollars a share to. $3.95 a share. Now, does that seem anything? Is that familiar to you? Are you seeing a 80% loss in the stock? Now, it then, over the next couple of years, came back. It's still not making a profit in October of uh, 03 when it gets back up to $55 a share. And then it just drops back down, then finds, and finally, as uh, from in after roughly um, what is that from ninety seven to oh uh, seven after ten years it gets back to its highs of close to a hundred dollars a share. So does this make sense to you? Does this say wow that's gone through uh, a, a a real journey? Then if we move it across and let's get back to there. Let's say okay this is this was. Uh, um, December of 07, and these things are going to shrink real fast. You see, December is still here, but look where it goes from there. And is it a straight ride up? No. And is it taking a dip now? Yes. But is Amazon worth less today than it was in, in, uh, what, what would that be? In June of last year? No. Is it still going to make profits? Yes. Is its profits going to continue to grow as we get into more digital uh, commerce and we get into artificial intelligence? And yes, it's going to go up. So these dips are normal. But again, where I really want to emphasize and where we want to go next is how does this translate into what's happening to our genome stocks. Now, again, if you're here back here in 2000, you got to believe in the science as it drops from $100 a share uh, to, what is it, $6 a share. You've got to believe in the science. If you don't, you bail right there. And that's where you are right now in, in the genome sequencing and the genome editing stocks. If you believe in the science, you say, this is Amazon uh, back in October of 2001. If you don't believe in the science, get out. Get out now. If you don't believe someday in the future they're going to put a needle in my arm and take my propensity for cancer out of my body because my mother died of cancer, my father died of cancer, and my daughter died of cancer. Carrie's going to die of cancer unless they take it out of his body. So now let's go to the genome therapy stock and see if we can translate what we saw happen to Amazon and see where maybe the future of Editus and CRISPR and Intella and Caribou and, and many of the others that you are familiar with. So let's look at that. To answer Bob's question, I want to start by looking at the history of several of the uh, therapy drugs, the genome therapy drugs that I own, and that would be Editus, Caribou, CRISPR, and Nutella. And on this chart, I've, I've gone back and started tracking them um, starting in 2017. And Trading Views makes it very easy for me to do this. I pull up the first chart on, um, on Editus, and then I go up here and say compare, and I enter the, the names of the other stocks that I want to compare it to. And as you can see, uh, they just kind of trail along and don't see much activity. And then the first thing that brought it, it to my attention and I think to the world's attention was the award of the Nobel Peace Prize to Jennifer Doudna and Emmanuel Carpentier uh, in October of 2020. And so that, that brings us around here. And you can see as a result, um, and since uh, CRISPR is um, basically owned and, and run 
by um, Emmanuel Carpentier, you can see it did a lot for their stock and it pulled a lot of the other um, genome therapy stocks that use CRISPR uh, along with it. So that explains that. that and, and as you can see, that gave an improvement uh, to CRISPR stock of about 462% uh, from roughly March of uh, 20 uh, to uh, June of 21. Uh, then uh, the, the, the stocks all follow pretty much the same pattern. And then in roughly, uh, what is it here, in June of uh, 21, um, Intella announces that they have a drug that cures a kidney disease, uh, no, a liver disease. And it is called ATTR. And that was announced in June of 21. And you can see what then happened as a result, and it culminated in August of 21, that this drug had cured a liver disease and it had done it in three people. So it was moving on to stage two of its trials. But you can see as a result of that, um, this stock, Intella, went up 816% between, um, why well, I started it in September of 20 to uh, roughly August of uh, 21. So in uh, just a little under a year, it had that kind of surge. And then you see that they all pretty much collapsed as the market conditions change. Not, not that this drug it didn't continue to cure lives. It just, the market atmosphere moved away from risk. And this is still a risk uh, stock because they aren't making money yet. They're in their clinical trials too, where they're putting needles in probably 30 to 40 people's arms. And then they will go to the FDC of the United States and other countries and they'll probably enter into a collaboration with a major pharmaceutical company and they will start curing lives. And you will see then all of these stocks will move in tandem as that happens. Now, it, will that happen? You must believe in the science. If you don't believe in the science, if you don't believe that soon in our lives, this science will change the way we live, then you don't belong in these stocks. But if you do believe in the science, this is going to happen. Will every one of these be a major winner? Will every one of these? I fully expect if Intella comes out and, and gets stage three approval and enters into a collaboration with a major pharmaceutical company to market it, I suspect you're going to see another, not 800, but probably a 1600 surge in the price. And it will happen that fast. It will happen within a year's time. I just don't know when they're going to get approved. I don't know when CRISPR is going to get approved. I don't know when Edit is going to get approved, but I believe in the science. Okay. Now you understand that a stock that could be worth $3,000 today could go from $100 to $8 because of fear, because of lack of a, what you don't understand turns into fear. Right behind fear is opportunity. And that's where we are today. That's where your opportunity lies. And I know you're saying, I got to get the hell away from this. This scares the laven bejeebies out of me. Okay, that's fear. What's right behind fear? Say it, opportunity. Okay, now, so we've looked at, we've looked at CRISPR and Editus and Intella and we've gained strength by understanding Amazon. Now what we have to do is decide what we're going to do from here on. Are we going to add to our holdings or are we gonna sit with what we've got? Personally, 
I'm going to sit with what I've got. And let me explain to you what I have. I have 50%, a little over 50% of my portfolio in Amazon, Google, Microsoft, uh, Facebook, and Intella. I think that's all of them. Uh, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, uh, Google, and Intella. There are six of them. Okay, so I have over 50% of my portfolio in there. I have another 25% of the portfolio in genome sequencing and genome editing. I believe my 50%, my big six, will give me about a 30% annualized return over the next 10 years. I believe my 25% in my uh, biotech, my genome sequencing and my genome editing, and I have a few stocks that are using artificial intelligence to help the pharmaceutical companies uh, do their, uh, find their uh, antibodies faster. I believe those stocks collectively will give me about a thousand percent return over the next five years. Those are my moonshots. Those are my moonshots. So then I have a few lesser moonshots in fintech um, and, and by, by, um, uh, robotics, things of that nature. If you want to see exactly what I have in my portfolio, you just go to Best of Us Investors and um, you can come, if you, particularly if you come at the first of the month, you can stay there for for uh, 30 days and you can see my portfolio and whatever and then um, go away and you, it doesn't cost you anything. If you stay over 30 days, it costs you $10 a month. And if you can't make $10 a month off of the shared information from what uh, you get from the tribe, well, from what you get from attending our Friday meetings, from what you get from Bob's questions of what this happened. And that's how my videos are, are generated. I don't go looking for some um, SPAC or whatever, although some of these might have been SPACs, I'm not sure. But what I do is look for those companies that are going to change the way I live. And I alluded to that I believe someday energy will cost me nothing. I believe that someday that on my roof, I will have a garbage can lid that, that points and follows the sun and magnifies the rays of the sun and charges a refrigerator in my basement that it's actually a battery that will run my house, run my car and everything. Those are moonshots. I don't know who that company is yet. I don't know that anybody has ever connected those dots like I have. I don't know that there isn't somebody sitting in their garage right now saying, I heard Kerry talk about that. I think that's a wonderful idea. I got to figure out how to, re how to reduce the size of a solar panel from a football field size down to a garbage can. I believe somebody is going to do that. I do. That's what my channel's all about. I don't live in today. I do not live in today. Oh, I do, but I, th I live in today, but I think in tomorrow. I look through binoculars. I don't look through a microscope. microscope. Because if you look through a microscope today, you are experiencing fear because you don't understand what's going on. If you'll watch a couple of my videos back, I'll explain to you, this is all about a toilet flushing. Yes, what's going on in the market today is about a toilet flushing. And that toilet is, takes the form of margin calls. If you don't know what a margin call is, Google it. If you'll do that, you'll understand what's happening in the market today. And you'll say, hand me my binoculars. Talk to you again tomorrow.